This is Bergstrom State Line Quiz Bowl. Now from the Collins Aerospace Studio at the Nordloff Center in downtown Rockford, here's your host, Eric Wilson. Hello and welcome to round two of Bergstrom State Line Quiz Bowl. We're getting back to some gameplay. Hope you enjoyed last weekend's recap of round one. That was all, it's always fun. It's one of our favorite episodes. But now we're back to playing the game. There are eight seats left in our next round. One of these teams will earn the first seat. Let's say hello to the Auburn Knights, shall we? First time we've seen Auburn because they got a buy in our first round. Seven time champs minus a couple of players from last season due to graduations. They are here for their first game. Senesio is the captain. Introduce us to your starting lineup, Senesio. To my far right is Juan. To my near right is Alex. I'm Senesio and my near left is Ashley. Welcome to the Auburn Knights facing off against the Stockton Blackhawks. <laughs> With an enthusiastic nod from their captain, Justin. Blackhawks are coming off a first round victory over Warren. They want their first trip to the Elite Eight, which would be pretty sweet. Justin, another enthusiastic head nod for that. Who did you bring with you today? Okay, to my right is David, to my far left is Maria, and to my immediate right or left is Jenna. Welcome to the Stockton Blackhawks. Are you ready to get to some quiz bowling? Heck yeah. Let's do it. Our buzzing round is how we begin our games. Grab your buzzers, contestants, the two most important rules for this round. Wait for me to call your name and say your answer loudly and clearly. Here we go with our first question this week. What quarterback asked to run the play Jet Chip Wasp in Super Bowl 54? Oh, Juan. Mahomes. That is correct. Long pass to Tyree Kill sparked a comeback for his Kansas City Chiefs. For bonus points, what do Patrick Mahomes and I have in common? We're both Super Bowl MVPs. No, I'm kidding. We're both former students of Texas Tech. All right, let's move on. What book, whose protagonist briefly loses a bell through a hole in his robe, is a Chris Van Alsberg story about a train journey to Santa's workshop? Justin. The Polar Express. You got it. And Stockton is on the board now with 10. What ethnic group comprises more than 90% of the population of China? Alex. Han. That's right. The most populous ethnic group, pop, populous ethnic group in the world. About 1.3 billion people. 10 more for Auburn. What state's research triangle, which includes the cities of Durham, Chapel Hill, Senecio? South Carolina. Incorrect. I will finish for Stockton. And Raleigh is home to the main campus of Duke University. David. North Carolina. It's the other Carolina. That's right. Stockton's got 10 more. We're tied again at 20. What novel that ends with the funeral of Ilyusha and depicts Dimitri's trial for patricide was written by Fyodor Dostoevsky? Alex. Crime and punishment. Incorrect. I'll finish for Stockton. About Russian siblings. Those siblings are the Karamazov brothers. The book's called the, the Brothers Karamazov. The zone of avoidance is a region of low visibility caused by what system whose satellites include the Magellanic Clouds? Senesio. The Milky Way. That's right. The zone of avoidance is the area of the sky obscured by the Milky Way. Ten points, Auburn. What religion's followers perform the offering to the waters at the end of a yasna service, which includes hymns addressed to the creator, Ahura Mazda? Alex. Austrianism. That is correct, and those are your ten points. In 1861, John Merriman was jailed in what state? The site of the Battle of South Mountain where a Confederate invasion was turned back at Antietam. Alex. Maryland. That is right. Merriman was a secessionist, and you've got ten more. Three in a row. In 1932, what name was given to World War I veterans who marched on Washington, D.C.? One. Bonus Army. That's right. Demanding early payment of extra pay for their service. Ten points. What group of movements venerate people, such as Prince Philip and John Frum, and believe in the ritual arrival of material goods to Pacific Islands? Alex. Cargo cult? That is right. John Frum is a mythical leader of what's called a cargo cult. Ten points. Allison Hannigan hosts what CW show on which magicians perform in front of Penn and Teller, who attempt to determine how the illusions were created? Ashley. Uh, fool us. That's right. The full names, Penn and Teller, Fool Us. No disappearing of those 10 points. They end up on your scoreboard. 
What type of object, after which the currency of Denmark is named, includes varieties like diadems and coronets? Alex. Crowns? Yes, and is worn on the head by monarchs was the easiest clue there at the end. Ten more. Which member of the Hudson River School painted the oxbow? Alex. Cole. Yep, and a series titled The Course of Empire. Of course, it was not really a school at all, just a group of landscape painters. Ten points, Auburn, you're in triple digits. In August 2021, what politician who lost a 2012 House race to Chris Collins became the first female governor of New York after Andrew Cuomo resigned? It's kind of a tough current events question. Kathy Hochul is that governor of New York, and that's the end of the round. We're out of time for the round, but we've got three more rounds to play. Auburn has 100 points, Stockton has 20. We'll be back with another round, which we call volleyball, after this. Welcome back. We are just round, one round into our game today, and Auburn has 100 points. Stockton, at the very beginning, was matching Auburn uh, question for question. Uh, they have 20 right now, but we've got a lot of game left to play, right? Um, our volleyball round is coming up next. But first, a very special thank you for our judge today. Brad Fisher is a longtime supporter of Bergstrom State Line Quiz Bowl. Brad is the head editor of the IHSA Scholastic Bowl State series. Uh, we call on his expertise a lot to be a judge and we really appreciate his help because he almost never says no to us. Brad, thanks for being here. We appreciate it. All right, contestants, our volleyball round is a back and forth. You can work as a team, but the answers need to come from the captains. And because of our coin flip, our first volleyball question will go to Auburn. So Nessio, are you and the team ready? Here comes your, here comes your first question. What Trojan warrior who killed Patroclus was killed by Achilles? Hector. 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 That seemed like a team agreement, right? 10 points, you are correct. And we've got a new question now for Stockton. In April 2020, what political party chose Keir Starmer as its leader to succeed Jeremy Corbyn, who had been defeated by Boris Johnson's conservatives? Labor? Yes, you got it, the Labor Party. And Stockton's got 10 points this round. Back to Auburn. The Swan River Colony, Australia's first free colony, eventually became Perth, the capital of what Australian state? West, 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 wait, what's it called? It's West, Western. Western Australia. Western Australia? You got it, right at the buzzer. Yep, makes up about a third of the continent, and you've got 10 more. Back to Stockton. The davison germer experiment showed diffraction of what particle, whose antimatter partner is the positron and is shared in covalent bonds? Electron? You got it. We'll give Maria credit for that one. She shout that, shouted that answer to you from the end. Nice work. Ten more points. Stockton, back to Auburn. What law of physics, which has a similar form to Newton's law of gravitation, gives the electrostatic force between two charged particles? Coulomb's law? Yep. And seems like you got that one really quickly, too, before I even finish the question. Ten more. We're question for question matching in this round. Back to Stockton. What 2016 film that features the song You're Welcome has a title character whose name means Ocean and co-stars Dwayne Johnson as the demigod Maui? Moana. That's correct. And you've got 10 points, Stockton. What video game company was sued in 2021 by the California Department of Fair Employment and Housing over the company's alleged frat boy culture? Blizzard. 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 Yep, Activision Blizzard. We would have taken that full name as well, but Blizzard's good enough. Good enough for 10 points for you. Back to you, Stockton. What party which staged the Hartford Convention during the War of 1812 was once led by Alexander Hamilton and rivaled the Democratic Republicans? Federalists? Yes, you got that quickly too. Another 10 for Stockton. Back to Auburn. Zadie Smith's novel On Beauty is based on what 1910 E.M. Forster novel which begins as Helen Schlegel visits the Wilcox family at the title house. Howard's End. Howard's End? Yes. Uh, Senecio with quick consultation to Ashley got that correct. Ten more for Auburn. Again, back to Stockton. What creatures from Norse myth, whose numbers included the sons of Ivaldi and their rivals, Brocker and Atri, were ugly beings gifted at smithing? Dwarves? Yes. Gimli's one of them in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Ten points for Stockton. Back to Auburn. 
What name is given to the vandals who violently resisted industrialization and the automation of mills and factories in early 19th century England? It's like um, the frame something. Oh, what's it called? The frame vandals. Incorrect. Buzzer got you anyway. Um, the, those are the Luddites. In fact, we still use that phrase to refer to someone who resists technology. Also, we had a long buzzer there. If you didn't recognize it, that means time is up for the round. I think that's the first time we've had a volleyball round where nearly every single question was answered. Great job for both of our teams. Let's give them a round of applause. After, so after two rounds of our game, Auburn has 150, Stockton has 70. We're going to take a break here and come back with a chance for you to play. The Bergstrom bonus question is next, and that answer is coming up in about two minutes. Born February 6, 1911 in nearby Tampico, Illinois, what former president once shared a big screen with a chip named Bonzo? Boy, after a really solid volleyball round, I just want to stress what a great volleyball round that was, teams. Um, point for point, question for question, we have the same point spread we did uh, at the, the end of our first rounds. Uh, 150 for Auburn, 70 for Stockton. Before we get to questions worth more points, though, how about pizza and pasta from Lino's of Rockford? Sounds like head nods all around. That's what's up for grabs in our Bergstrom bonus question. If you're watching at home, you already saw this question. Our contestants have not. Hands on your buzzers, contestants, and let me know if you know the answer to this. Born this weekend in 1911, February 6th, in nearby Tampico, Illinois, what former president once shared the big screen with a chimp named Bonzo? Ashley. Reagan. That's right, Ronald Reagan. And before being elected president, Ronald Reagan was an actor. Latest actor to actually take on the role of Reagan is Dennis Quaid, and the movie Reagan is set to hit theaters later this year. Congratulations, Ashley, Auburn Knights. You're going to Lino's on Lino's. So thank them for us when you get there. We'll be back with more questions worth points in our lightning round right after this break. All right, stand by for the fastest round in our game. It's the Nika IBEW lightning round. That's why we call it the lightning round, because it moves so fast. Uh, we've got three categories to pick from, and because of the coin flip, Stockton gets first choice. Remember to our teams, this is a work as a team round, but all the answers need to come from the captains. Justin, your choices this week are primary instruments, P-R-E-D, or famous nicknames. Uh, we'll take primary instruments. You got it. Name the primary instruments played by these jazz musicians. I will give you the musician's name. You give me their primary instrument. Some of these answers may be repeated. So keep that in mind as you're, we're moving along. You have 60 seconds to answer these. And then whatever you don't get to, Senecio, you and the Knights will have 30 seconds to clean up those points as well. You run a category. It's 100 points. Advice for both teams, you can pass. Are you ready for your first question, Justin, and the team? Name the primary instruments played by these jazz musicians. John Coltrane. Saxophone? Correct. Miles Davis? Trumpet? Correct. Ella Fitzgerald? Piano? Incorrect. Charlie Parker, who was nicknamed Bird? Pass. Artie Shaw, whose instrument is made of ebony? Pass. Duke Ellington? Piano? Correct. Buddy Rich? Pass. Winton Marsalis? Pass. Glenn Miller? Trombone? Correct. Dave Brubeck. Pass. Charlie Parker, who is nicknamed Bird. Trumpet? Incorrect. Artie Shaw, whose instrument is made of ebony. Clarinet? That's correct. Buddy Rich. Piano? Incorrect. Winton Marsalis? Trombone? Incorrect. Dave Brubeck. And that's our time. Five of them, that's not bad. That was actually, that was a relatively tough category considering the name, the name of the category might have been a little misleading. 50 points added to your score. You're up to 120. Solid. We've got 30 seconds left in SEO that you could clean up these other 50 points. I'll read them as fast as I can. Are you ready? Name the primary instruments played by these jazz musicians and some of these can repeat. Here we go. Ella Fitzgerald. Voice. Correct. Charlie Parker. Who's Saxophone. A, correct. Buddy Rich. Clarinet. Incorrect. Winton Marsalis. Trumpet. Correct. Dave Brubeck. Piano. 
That's correct. And there's nothing to go back to because the only one that didn't get answered was an incorrect answer. Uh, so you added 40. We're at 190 to 120. The only one no one got, Dax Nielsen also plays these for cheap trick, the drums. That was the Buddy Rich question. Okay, 190 to 120. Now it's Auburn's turn. And these are the categories you have left, Senesio. P-R-E-D or famous nicknames? Maybe nicknames that might be like presidents, so Louis can be. Uh, famous nicknames? You got it. Identify the people who had these nicknames. I'll give you the nickname, you name the person, 60 seconds, and then same rules apply to you, Justin. You'll have 30 to get to what they don't. And remember, you can pass. Ready for the first one, Senesio? Yep. Identify the people who had these nicknames. President, nicknamed Ike. Eisenhower. Eisenhower. Correct. Boxer, who died in 2016, nicknamed the greatest. Ali. Yeah. Ali. Correct. Gangster, nicknamed Scarface. Okay. Al Capone. Correct. Inventor, known as the Wizard of Menlo Park. Edison. Edison. Correct. Author, nicknamed Papa. Pass. Trumpeter, nicknamed Satchmo. Armstrong. 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 Correct. American painter, nicknamed Jack the Dripper. Pollock. Pollock. Correct. General, nicknamed Old Blood and Guts. Patton. Correct. Opera singer, nicknamed La Divina. Pass. Rapper, nicknamed The Based God. Pass. Author, nicknamed Papa. Do you have anything? No. Um. Byron. Incorrect. Opera singer, nicknamed La Divina. <laughs> Pavarotti. Incorrect. And no time left to get to that final past one. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them right. 70 points added to your score. There's three left on the board, Justin. 30 seconds. Take all the time if you need it. Otherwise, you can no answer or you can move on and uh, we will keep the game going. You ready for the first one? Yep. Identify the people who had these nicknames. Author nicknamed Papa. Hemingway. That's correct. Opera singer nicknamed La Divina. Pass. Rapper nicknamed The Based God. Do what you want. Tupac. Incorrect. Opera singer nicknamed La Divina. Claire. Incorrect. Those last two are really hard. The only two no one got. The opera singer was Maria Callas. And the rapper nicknamed The Based God. His real name is Brandon Christopher McCartney. We would have taken that. He's also known as Lil B. So we end this round with still a relatively strong lead for Auburn. We'll be back with our Mercy Health final challenge right after this. All right, there's only one round left to play today. It's the Mercy Health final challenge. Right now, Auburn has 260 points. Stockton has 130. Whoever wins this game is moving on to the first seat in our Elite Eight contestants. Rules are the same as, as the first round. The only difference is that the questions are worth 20 points instead of 10 points. And the two most important rules are, wait for me to say your name before you answer, and then say that answer loudly and clearly. Here is our first question in the Mercy Health final challenge. Good luck, teams. What poet protested the Peterloo massacre in The Mask of Anarchy and described the lone and level sands surrounding a fallen statue in Oz... Kobe. Shelley. That's correct. Ozymandias is that final poem. Percy Bysshe Shelley, look on my work, she mighty and despair. 20 points to Auburn. You're up to 280. What name is given to the dark-skinned Marian apparition, now a national symbol of Mexico? No. Alex. Lady of Guadalupe. That is correct. Juan Diego witnessed that in 1531 near Mexico City. 20 more Auburn. What statesman who had the M's dispatch edited to Alex? Bismarck. That's correct. You didn't even need the rest of that question. We will move on three in a row for Auburn in this round. What term refers to irregular motion of a fluid in eddies, which is contrasted with laminar flow? Senesio. Turbulent flow? Yes, and it occurs at high Reynolds numbers. That's four in a row. Auburn's up to 340. What technique whose results may be analyzed using a factor known as R sub F? Alex? Chromatography. Yes, Oper separates components of a mixture based on polarity. 20 points. What composer of a third symphony once dedicated to Napoleon, Alex. Beethoven. Yes, nicknamed Eroica, and you have 20 more points. 
What Czech-born politician became the first female Secretary of State under Bill Clinton? That was Madeleine Albright. No points for either team. Let's get a new question. Which man who defeated Maxentius at the Battle of Milvian Bridge? Alex? Constantine the Great. Yes, we would take that. Moved his Roman imperial government to Byzantium, which he renamed after himself. 20 points. You're up to 400. What metabolic process, whose namesake particles lose energy through a series of redox reactions? Alex? Electron transport chain. Yes, you got that right, or ETC we would have taken that. It precedes oxidative phosphorylation, 20 points. The marginal zone separates the white and red pulp of what abdominal senesio? The spleen. Yes, and that was a tough uh, anatomy question. You got it early, 440 is your total. In which opera by Goacino Rossini is the title character forced to shoot an apple off his Alex. William Tell. Yes, off his son's head. You probably knew the myth, even if you didn't know the opera. That is worth 20 points. What book, which comes after Proverbs in Christian Bibles, says that there is a time to be born and a time to die? Senesio. Ecclesiastes. Yes, and laments that all is vanity. 20 more points. What program? created by Franklin Roosevelt in 1941, empowered the U.S. government to sell weapons on credit to the Allies during World War II. Alex. Cash and carry. Incorrect. Stockton, you could take these 20. David. Lend-Lease. You got it. The Lend-Lease Act. That is Ooh, right. 20. And that's how we end the round. <laughs> 20 points, yes, let, let's call that a moral victory, right? A, you, you like the small victories. And let's be honest, I mean, you were up against a very tough opponent. We knew that. First of all, congratulations, Auburn. You are in familiar territory, moving on to the next round. Um, but seriously, Stockton, also congratulations. Like I said, uh, you're up against a tough opponent. You played a very solid game, and we know that it's not easy for you to get here because you all travel very far to make it to play our game. How many of you are seniors? Oh, man. So, David, you will form the core of next year's team. You're coming back, right? It might just be me, if we're being honest. You what? It might just be me. Oh, man. Well, you have some recruiting to do, okay? We're going to hold you to that. Um, and so it was a pleasure watching you. Good luck to our seniors. And good luck in your show, Footloose, right? Because Justin and Maria are starring in Footloose in a couple of weeks at Stockton. So congratulations on that. Break a leg for us, okay? Um, and Auburn will face next week's winner of Pearl City versus Marengo. Hope you can join us for that.